Welcome everyone to the Abbey Door online service led this week by young people from the Y Door Benefits with songs and tunes from local musicians. We're going to look at Jesus' parable of the mustard tree and how we open windows of light and plant seeds of love. But first, a welcome in prayer. One thing we have asked of the Lord. This is what we seek that we may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Amen. Ah, Sunday mornings, time for church. Come on, Samuel, wake it up. It's time for church. I don't want to go to church. Samuel, come on out. I don't want to go to church. Samuel, you're going to love it when you get there. Come on, up you get. <laughs> you don't want to sit through one of these sermons again? They're boring. Ah, uh, no, no, cold. no, no. Things have all changed, Samuel. See, it's not Simon there giving a long sermon anymore. It's led by the children. It's online. It's really great fun. Oh, come on then. Come on then, up you get. Good boy. Good boy. There we come are. On come on, off we go. Why are you in your best clothes? Oh, I can't go in my PJs! Ah! is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ have mercy. Phil, it's time for the collect. Ah, yes, the collect. Yes, would you collect it for me? You want me to collect the collect? Are you joking? Well, no, it's over there. Okay, you'll be asking me to collect my thoughts next. Well, yes, actually, as we will have a bit of silence afterwards, and this prayer helps us to gather everyone's prayers together, giving them to God. My thoughts on the collect have been collected.
Jesus, Saviour and Friend, you are wonderful, our Lord and our companion upon the changeful way, the comforter of its weariness, our guide to the eternal town, the welcome at its gates. Amen. We believe and trust in God the Father Almighty. We believe and trust in Jesus Christ his Son. We believe and trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe and trust in the three in one. Amen. This song was brought back to the UK by a friend of ours who worked between Israel and Palestine in conflict resolution. It was created during a peace and friendship meeting between Israeli and Palestinian women. Oh
Bible. It's from the book of Mark chapter 4 and begins at verse 30. Jesus said with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable shall we use for it? It's like it is like a grain of mustard seed which when sown on the ground it's the smallest of all of the seeds on earth yet when it is sown then all the garden plants and pulls out larger branches so the birds of of all the air can make nests in its shade. Hello, everybody, and um, thank you for joining us on our online Abidor service this Sunday. I'm going to introduce you to Robin, who's with us here. And um, Robin is uh, an alumni of the Jungle Club and the youth group that we had in Madley, also has helped at Messy Church, now living in Hereford and working at the courtyard. And um, we're going to have a little chat about the parable that we've just heard read the parable of the mustard seed and obviously there is an element there of something being small uh having or leading to something being great but maybe that's just a little bit too simple that uh whole interpretation maybe it's more to do with the seed being hidden but having huge potential um having huge significance a little bit like jesus's teaching or ministry was hidden at the beginning um, and that the tree is a symbol maybe of the early church a place of shelter where the hidden potential was actually actualized and maybe the seed needs to be left alone it needs the dark of the soil uh, to grow we need to kind of stand back and maybe the kingdom is a place of refuge but not necessarily the afterlife could be domestic creation if you like We've been given enough. But what we can be really sure of is, I think, that we need to sow the seeds of love. So I'm going to ask Robin now, and hopefully we'll have a, a discussion around these two questions. How do we sow the seeds of love for the future, bearing in mind the church and the decline in numbers? And what seeds of love should we sow? So what seeds of love and how do we sow them? So Robin, what do you reckon? Well, you're starting with a small question, sir. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's really interesting in terms of the church and, like you say, numbers declining, not as many people going physically to church. I think it's a really interesting question at the moment. I mean, we're doing this over Zoom. Yeah. We are, this is a digital service. And is that is there a way that that can be harnessed to sow the seeds of love further afield, to find a new way into people's homes, into people's hearts, um, by using the new tools that we have at yeah. our disposal? And... I mean, we're obviously, you know, reaching a lot more people now um, mm -hmm. through the online services, as are many churches. Um, I guess I worry about losing something that you could call incarnational or real, the fellowship and the love. Um, it might be a bit too easy just to sit in your PJs and watch and then turn off. I don't know. Maybe, but maybe it's... Uh... <sighs> nothing okay so let's think about it in terms of like a seed um 
you don't just have a seed and then it turns into a tree. You plant it yeah. and the soil has to be right and you have to nurture it and it has to have light and uh, and nutrients um, and then it has to take root before it will grow. Yeah. So maybe this is the planting of the seed and then other elements can come into it and this and it grows from that it's not necessarily that you can reach people now digitally and so that's it that's how we do it that's all that there is but I think it's a way of reaching new people and then from there you can invite them in and one thing I wanted to say was I think for me um growing up and, and going to church in Madley and um also I'm involved with the Methodist Summer Fellowship there as well a big thing that was important to me was how much I was respected as a young person um and and being invited to things that weren't necessarily the church service but meals and youth groups and festivals and when I was there being um being able to ask questions and, mm. and openly and then being answered, you know, honestly. And, um, you know, it's all of these things. It was never just you come to church on Sunday and therefore yeah. job done. You're a Christian and, and Jesus loves you and that's it. it um there's all these other things about church community and this digital thing is is a, is a new one of those so you talked about inviting people this would be the seed and we'd let the seed grow on its own mm -hmm. stand back but we'd want to invite people so if we're thinking of future generations what sort of things should we invite them to what should we be dealing with in terms of issues maybe that might be relevant and capture people's imagination who are of a younger generation? I think it's really important to be a safe place mm -hmm. for everybody and to be open to all types of people. I think, I mean, I fall into the millennial generation. I'm going to split that up in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at kind of teenagers now, um, I think generations are becoming more and more open-minded. And I think that is wonderful and also a bit awe-inspiring and a bit overwhelming. Um, and so the church can be a safe, if it can be a safe place for all of those people, and like I say, offer respect to all of those people in the same way that I was offered respect as a young person coming through the church. And um, there'd be a safe place for them to, to discuss whatever it is that matters to them. And they probably would ask some difficult questions. Mm -hmm. um, and... I think as long as, you know, we're being true and honest to what we believe and um, the teachings of Jesus, then then those things can all fit together. That they don't, it doesn't have to be um, that the church is separate from that in any kind of way. I think the church can grow as, as society. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. And and thank you. I've got one last question. You said um, that the millennials are yeah. more open. And I wonder, are they, do you think they're open not only to spiritual things, but are they, mm -hmm. do you think they're more open than the previous generation to what you might call Christian spiritual practice? I think it massively depends. 
I, I don't, yeah, I think that they are open to spirituality. I think there are a lot of things, we have a lot of access now to everything that goes on in the world. And that includes the bad things. Mm. And I don't think we can shy away from there being bad things that have come out of some people's version of Christianity. And so I think it's tricky to find that balance between spirituality and Christianity as an organised religion, which can get a bad rap. Yeah. yeah. You know, so so it's difficult to say that I, that whether or not millennials would be more open to Christianity, but I don't think that they're close to it. Um, I I think it could, you know, we could be in danger of being close to that. Yeah. As Brilliant. the generations go on. Okay. Well, look, Robin, I think we could probably talk for uh, for ages on this and maybe we should do another session i don't know because yeah. that, that was really it was really helpful for me and um so i um it's been great talking and um we're going to have the lord's prayer um read for us now that's the next bit of the service so i'm going to say goodbye and do the the wave and uh thank you very much and and take care uh, thank Robin. You. okay bye-bye our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for our family and friends. Help us to care for each other. We thank Hello. you for the trees and birds no, and no. snowdrops. Help us to care for the earth. We thank you for the love and peace you have placed in our hearts. Help us to share this place. We pray for everyone who is suffering because of the pandemic. Help us to keep each other safe. We pray for people in the places around the world where there is no peace. Help us to build peace by sow sowing the seeds of your love. Amen. 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 Now we have the canticle. You're not going to tickle me. No, the canticle. First off, it's not part of our daily exercise and you'd need a pretty big stick to do it anyway. No, it's like a prayer or praise. It comes from the Latin canticulum. Wow, Latin. You can tell you go to cathedral school. <sighs> Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful, Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. Amen, sister. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here with you. I'm going to be doing a medley. The first part will be by Ayu Ogada, a Kenyan artist. That will be followed by a song that I heard around the fire probably 30 years ago now 
I've never heard it since, but I've never forgotten it. And the final part will be by Bob Marley. Thank you. final blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Um, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you all.
We shall end now with a final piece of music. I see you on the road Trying to find your way home And I wish you peace in your heart Bring your boat to the shore Don't be alone anymore And I wish you peace in your heart I wish you peace in your heart.